around except maybe on New Year's. Now, you want to look for a marabou when you buy it that's nice and fluffy, that has nice fluffy fibers. And this happens to be strung marabou, what I have right here. Uh, it, you can probably get it in Las Vegas off a, off a costume there. Now, we're going we're gonna to do a couple things to this. We're going to use this for uh, a tail. Now, how long should the tail be? Well, I usually tell people when they start off just to make it about shank length, and that's what we're going to do. Shank length, I've got it between my two fingers like this, and I'm going to trim it after measuring it so I don't have a lot of excess materials to deal with. So I'm going to tie it right in like this. Now, you may want to tie your tail in first, and then your lead. It's kind of up to you. I always like to put my lead on first. Now, as you can see, I put on the uh, marabou. Now, you're going to ask how many fibers. I could tell you it's 50 fibers. This means memorizing it every time you do it. If it's too much, don't do it the next time. Put a little less in. That's the way fly tying is. Now, notice again, let's talk about tying this on so it doesn't twist. I know that this is your first uh, lesson. So let's go back and do this over again. Now, let's watch. Go up here, grab the thread, go underneath the point, and pull down. And there you go. It's right in. Oh, <gasps> look what happened. Remember I talked about on the first fly? I cut the thread at my point. Now, what are we going to do? First of all, you can have another bobbin already ready to go to correct that. But if you're nice and patient, just re-thread. We're going to do that special way of uh, threading the bobbin. There we go. Now, okay, just lay the thread right on top and wrap to the back, back over it, and you've saved your fly. Now, don't hit your point again, and you're ready to go. I'm really interested in durability on my flies, and you as a beginning tire should be too, because nothing's going to be more irritating when you're out there fishing and have your fly come apart, especially if you have your buddies around. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take some copper wire. It can be any color of the wires. This is ultra wire. This is something you should have in, in your kit. And uh, it's, it's just great stuff for a variety of reasons, but mainly durability and adding a little accent to the fly. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to take this, and this is going to be one of the more easy things to tie on. Make a little loop like this and pull it tight and then wrap so that it's right in there with the lead. Don't be a, a miser and tie it in here. This will be add for the durability and give it a little bit more weight by going right to the back. Now, again, I have put this on a bobbin, and you're going to find a, to make a visit down to Cabela's and get a couple of the inexpensive bobbins to use for material and uh, lead and a variety of different uh, uh, materials. Okay, here we go. Now we've got that down. There's just a couple things we need to do, and actually you could have done this before you put on the lead, but there, there's uh, not too many rules on your, on your sequence of tying materials. Now this happens to be some uh, Accent Mirage, you have it in your kit, uh, Flashaboo type stuff, it, or uh, Crystal Flash I guess is what you'd, the better terminology, but Flashaboo works really good too. Flashaboo is a little bit wider, and it becomes in a variety of, of all kinds of wild colors and, and sparkles. And I, I like to add just a little bit of, to the back of my woolly bugger right here, just to give it a little bit more flash. Again, this is optional. You don't need any of it if you don't want. You can put it on the bottom part. You can mix it in with the, the uh, marabou. It's kind of up to you. So we tie it in. Again, watch that point. That's something that, you, as, as a beginner, you're going to do a lot. But, but you now know how to correct that, don't you? Start right in again. A lot of people will teach you in classes to do a whip finish after, or a, a half hitch. This is a half hitch. Uh, after you uh, uh, tie a particular th uh, item in, and that is okay. But you don't really need to as long as you keep the bob and tension on. Uh, just want to let you know if you feel a little paranoid about something coming undone in case you break your thread, this half hitch. Now let me show you just something right now while we're here. Take these two fingers, roll, if you can see right here where I'm doing it, I'll move my fingers here where you can see it. See, see my finger pulling it? 
Okay, now I'm separating my, my fingers like this, letting the thread go right up. Then I slip my fingers back down here, do the same thing. And that's just a simple little whip finish that can add, again, a little, little knot. If you want to take it off and cut it like that, and then do something to the fly, and then start over again. That's kind of the knot you may want to use. We're going to get some chenille, and chenille uh, comes in, a, again, in a variety of uh, sizes and color. On this particular size fly, we're going to use a medium, but, you know, it's kind of up to you. You kind of have to look at it and see the width you want. Now, that's medium. Now, let's take a look at a large. Large is quite a bit bigger. Uh, I kind of like the full look, so I think I'll go to large today. Now, this is black, and we're doing a black one, which is probably the number one used. But let me tell you, a brown with yellow and brown hackle, there's all kinds of combinations on these woolly buggers of colors that you can use. In fact, I used one last year that was purple. It was terrific. Okay, now notice that there's some thread right here. What I did is I moved some of the chenille out from the thread. This is how this is designed. It's twisted. And I'm going to tie in. Now, again, we can do the same thing. Grip it with our thumb, pull it down, and I, I gather up the material. The reason I do that is so that I don't have a big bulk area right here to make your woolly bugger kind of bulky here and thin here. So we don't tie in all this bulky part. We just tie in the thread. Now, we've got, now how long should you have this? Well, you're going to find out. Uh, usually about three inches to four inches in, in the length of your chenille. Uh, you'll, you'll get the idea about the more you tie, uh, and that's another thing I want to talk to you about too. Don't sit down and tie one or two flies. At least plan on tying a half a dozen to 12 flies at a time. Each fly will get better and your proficiency will get better. Now, of course, we got to put in hackle. Everybody that's ever used a woolly bugger knows about hackle. And again, my hackle went into that black hole that we talked about. Uh, I hope I'm getting paranoid. Uh, there, I found it in my black hole here. Now, again, uh, we're going to use a saddle. And I really suggest that you, uh, before you started this tape, to go through uh, with Scott Sanchez so he can tell you the difference between a uh, saddle and a neck hackle. Now what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to take and get a, a black saddle here and we've got, we're going to get, I like a lot of this little fluff here. This means it's going to absorb water. And so we're going to take this uh, hackle, as you can see the saddle hackle is a little longer, we're going to cut it right there. And we're going to take out all this fluff, but we're going to leave some of that right there. Okay, now we've cleaned off the hackle. We're going to tie it in. Now, again, just like we did on the Griffith snap, we're going to, to aim it at a little bit of an angle. Notice that my hands are on the vise. Tilt it in. Again, I have my thread. Make that little loop right here. Pull it tight, and then wrap it forward. We're going to wrap it right to the end of the lead. Remember, we had that little bit of space right here. It's important that we keep that space glossy side to the back. Now, the first thing we're going to do is then is, this has got something that I've done from the very start, my very first books that I advocated, is wrapping one wrap behind the hackle and then the next wrap in front of it. Now, the reason is so the hackle doesn't slide off the chenille. Now, we're going to wrap it the same way we did that, the Griffiths Nat right up to the front. Now, again, we're going to switch materials. You know, I'm holding it with my right hand. I have my bobbin in my left hand. We're going to slide it over, pull down with my left hand, bring the bobbin up, and tie it in. Then make a couple more insurance cuts. Now, again, I'm going to take my scissors, open it up, follow it down, Woo! and the chenille flies. We're going to tie it in. Now, we're going to make one pull by our hand just underneath that point. We're going to grab, grip our pliers and 
we're going to grab them right on the end. I'm going to use these rotaries, but you, if you have the regular pyre, it'll be just fine. Now we're going to, we're going to wrap this nice and even. Now, okay, I want you to watch how I'm holding this uh, rotary hackle plier. And we're just going to go just like this, around, working our way up. Yep, we're going to need a little bit more hackle, so I'm going to reposition my hackle plier. And boom, whoops. Now that's going to happen to you. And this will happen two different ways. Now I'm going to, I did this on purpose because I want to show you what can happen. Now we're going to go back to your other type of pliers and you'll see the same thing. They, the, sometimes the pliers don't hold and they'll pull right out or they'll break the hackle. That's common. Don't worry about it. it it's going to happen to you. Just re-grip -gri the hackle plier. You may have to change your spacing a little bit. Now this is the other hackle plier. You can see how I'm just passing it. And some of you may find this when you first get started a little easier to use than the rotary. And it usually happens right about there. You're running out of material. Back up. We're going to just back up for a second. And what you want to know is that you just because you get to that point, you doesn't mean you can't go back. Going back is not a, a, uh, uh, a question of your fly tying skills. It's getting it right. Now we're going to reposition this because we what happened? We lost some of our hackle. So you want to look for hackle that's fairly long when you do these woolly buggers. Now we're at this point where we can tie it off. There we go. And we have our, we still, we know we could, maybe could have a little bit more hackle, but you know what? This fly is going to fish just fine the way it is. What I want to tell you is you're going to make mistakes when you first start. You're going to have, have a little bit of frustration. Sometimes you just need to relax for a second, maybe even start over, but you'll get it. Okay, now to make this a little bit more durable, what we're going to do now is take our wire and go through. Now see right here, this is where the hackle started right behind the uh, uh, chenille and that's going to not pull off. A lot of you, if you don't wrap that one wrap in front of that hackle, it's going to pull off. But to make sure that it stays together, we just wrap this uh, wire right through it. Now if you want to put purple wire, or you want to use gold, uh, red, whatever, or black if you don't want any shine to come through it, it will make your fly a lot more durable. And at this point, we're going to do the same thing. And notice how I just kind of went underneath, brought the bobbin up, and tied it down. I guarantee you tie a dozen or two of these, and you're going to be ready. Uh, your skills are really going to come a lot quicker to you. This, this fly, the way I've tied it, is really giving you a lot of different options uh, to create your own pattern. Now, of course, we're going to go back to the whip finish. You know, sometimes whip finish is... Uh, uh, frustrate people. Uh, again, I told you, you know, if you have have this type of whip finish, uh, I'm I'm a real big fan of this one. If, yeah, and this is uh, again the Mattarelli. I'm going to hold it up here for you. Now, before you start this, this is a good time to do this half hitch, or if you want, you can learn to do this with your hand, and then you don't have to have any. The only problem with your hands is see what I, I got some fibers in. Okay, whoops, cut it off like that. But let's go back and one more time go over. This is the Mattarelli. Ready? Again, you're going to have it facing you just like this. And what we're going to do is pull down a little thread, going to get it around that little uh, indentation. We're going to tilt it down, reach up, and grab the thread, form the little triangle. And then, see if we, once we form the little triangle by, by rotating it forward, then just pull it right up to the bead and just let it wrap around. Oh, it's kind of fun. Now, again, this slides out and this slides in. Now, you just release it and you have your equipment finished. What we're going to do is add the cement right on the bead and let it just sink right into the material. It doesn't hurt the bead at all. You got a, got a nice, uh, durable fly, I'll guarantee you, this will be a better fly the way I've tied it than 
what you'll buy in a store, it'll last a lot longer. And that's going to be your benefit 